died, but no one knows that who are these people they are buried in. They are missing the body of the present, but no one knows that who are these people. There is cultural suppression in Balochistan also. There you are, uh, our identity has become the uh, biggest uh, threat to us. Uh, no education is provided to the common Baloch peoples. And when the Baloch youth uh, forced to leave the, uh, leave the Balochistan University and forced to, uh, for the education, they go to the, uh, to the federal universities, to other provinces' universities, they have been profiled and threatened there. And there, uh, there are multiple cases where they, they were abducted from the very universities of Pakistan and the University of Balochistan. When we started our movement from uh, 23rd of November, this movement actually uh, 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 witnesses and exposes the whole setup of Pakistani state. While a youth named Balash was uh, enforcedly disappeared first, and then he was presented in the court. And the judiciary sent him to the 10 days remand. But after two days of his remand, when his family met him in the court, he was uh, killed by the state and claimed, uh, the state claimed that he was a terrorist. So there we can see that we have exposed all of the state institutions. One institution is behind um, the human rights violation, but all of the other institutions are supporting them. Uh, even though unable to provide us justice. Like that, uh, I will uh, also add this, that uh, during our movement, more than 50 persons are abducted from Balochistan. And during this election, uh, election of Pakistan, the abductions continue. And people continue to disappear from the different regions of Balochistan. And they didn't stop there. And while they, they were writing charges and people were protesting uh, uh, for the writing, the Lord's mothers were on the roads for their enforcedly disappeared son. And even though they have abducted 60 years old, uh, a farmer, or basically what he was doing, he was just earning for his family and he was also abducted. And after five days of the sitting of his family, he was then released. So they have continued this. And uh, while there is a case running on in Islamabad, I quote, where the attorney journal has uh, give the verdict that in, on 10th of January, that after that, no one should be abducted. But after that uh, verdict, also people are disappearing. From the last, uh, from 10th January till day, there are more than 30 people who have been disappeared. So it is uh, uh, evident that the state institutions are unable I can say they are incompetent to provide justice, even though they are incompetent to give below to the very rights that has been written in the Constitution of Pakistan. And like myself, many of the human rights defenders are facing threats. All of those who were abducted, part of a, many of them were the political activism. And this is actually the right of freedom of expression that has been violated by the Pakistani state. And they're, they're violating it. And any person who talk for the Baloch rights, who talk for their uh, own rights, is being uh, claimed as a threat and is being taken by the Pakistani army, is being tortured illegally in their detention centers. And then if the family is, I can say it's very hard, but I feel if the family is lucky enough, they will kill them. And if the family is not lucky enough, they will detain them for the last 15 years. And even though they may die in the detention, but the family doesn't know. Because there is a case, Ali Azlar Bangulzai, who is being detained from the, from the last year. He was abducted from in 2003, like 20 years. Now, his grandchildren joined the protest. And they are protesting for their grandfather that he must be released. Or at least his fate must be known that uh, rather he's, he's been killed in the detention or he is alive. So this uh, is what Baloch uh, nation has been suffering. Every person, like uh, if you can divide Baloch community, half of them, many of them are the direct victims of state atrocities, while thousands of them are still in the detention center, illegal detention center of Pakistani state. And the remaining are living their life in fear. They don't know one day they can be abducted. And many of our uh, 
Onisian fellows are forced to leave this country, are forced to, like in younger ages, when they are in 16th standard, 15th standard, their family uh, gather all of their earnings and send them to, get, uh, uh, to other states like Dubai and anywhere so that they can survive. They can afford one person to survive, so can they send them in any other state and they, their life is lost. So what we are suffering as a nation is uh, behind, uh, uh, I can say that we, it, it's, we are, it's possible to narrate this story, uh, but uh, the human rights defenders and the political activists, what they are suffering, they are still committed to their cause. Uh, we are facing sedition uh, charges, we are facing the uh, arbitrary arrest, and the every family members, like during our march, the family who participated for the release of their family members are currently facing threats. And three of them are abducted. After when they ended the movement and after when they, uh, they reached their native villages in Haran, three of them, namely Miran uh, and uh, his brother and his uncle were abducted. And this movement started uh, um, against the extrajudicial killings. But when we arrived in the capital of uh, uh, Balochistan, the family members received four uh, extrajudicially killed bodies. They were uh, identified by their family members that they were previously reportedly disappeared. And their cases were registered in the human rights organization. Their cases were with us. Their family were present in Islamabad. They were protesting for their release. And what they received, their dead bodies. And again, the state of Pakistan claimed that they have killed the terrorists. But they were not terrorists, they were the reportedly disappeared, innocent Balochi. And none of them has been, uh, you know, presented in any form. None of them has been predicted that they were terrorists or innocent people. But after that, nothing happens. No any state institution have taken any kind of notice of this thing. No any kind of judiciary, even the Supreme Court of Pakistan is stay silent. And during all this election campaign, none of the federal parties have even though mentioned or even though raised the issue of Baloch genocide and the enforced disappearance, they, they never address these issues. And there is no any kind of, uh, even though I can say that initiative or the uh, initiative for, uh, from themselves that they can raise this issue or they can solve this issue. Uh, thank you if I take a, a bit longer time. And now uh, I will, uh, you know, the other speak for speak. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moran. Can I just say on a personal level, and thank you for your courage and commitment that you've shown throughout. And we'll do everything we can to ensure your safety by exposing the threats that you're under. And we'll try to do that and use Parliament to do that as well as the media in this country. Thank you very much for your contribution. It's really set the scene. Can I now ask Dr. Sabiha Baluch? Um, Sabi, as you know, is a, she's a doctor by profession. She's the former chairperson of the Balak Balosh um, student organization, BSAC. And I'd like her to speak now. I believe she's with us. The administrator could unmute Dr. Sabia. We have over 400 people on this Zoom and people joining us now, which is extraordinary. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Please uh, do. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for us, for the Baloo people, uh, someone when uh, decide to hear us, uh, that's the biggest thing that we are audible. Since uh, 10 years, I'm working on this ground, uh, politically, uh, for the human rights, for the student rights. Uh, as I have observed, uh, what's the biggest challenge that we are in our debate? No one wants to listen to us. Not because uh, we are not facing uh, any challenges, just because a uh, shield is created around us. That uh, shield is of, made of fear, made of uh, pseudo-politicians, made of pseudo-leaders. Uh, those who are representing us but are not actually belonging to our society. Uh, everyone 
um, those who want to talk to you about Balochistan, they get abducted, they get, uh, they get trashed, and uh, so many things happen to them that uh, we became a uh, voiceless sense takers. As in the uh, last uh, 20 uh, years, we are inaudible, uh, especially in different areas of the world. So basically, I was working for the student rights uh, since 2016 with the Student Action Committee. And uh, I uh, express my grievousness like we did plan uh, all the work of trillions of uh, gold and uh, uh, gas and so many mineral resources, but the education rate is 23%. We can see all the schools, the small schools are uh, within the periphery are occupied by the army. And uh, in this province, which uh, what millions of uh, uh, millions of uh, minerals, there are only four universities. Uh, they are, and uh, these uh, in these universities, Baloruch can't afford to study because the people are uh, so much pushed back that uh, they can't afford to study. So while we are speaking, while we are talking, uh, it's a matter of survival uh, from the basic uh, rights to live uh, like a human. We have to speak. Uh, we are facing worst human rights violation. And the people are facing worst uh, poverty. Uh, people are facing a society which is a lawless society. There's no judiciary. Uh, there's uh, no... Uh, Parliament, there's uh, no NHKUT person existing for the safety of balloons. And uh, all these institutes uh, beneath this state working uh, as judiciary, as police, as, as anything else, they all are supporting this state to continue the genocide. Uh, uh, let me tell you, like in a society uh, that is lawless, how can a human live a life? There are so many psychopaths. There are so many humans that want to uh, suppress the other human that all people are uh, pressed by the Pakistani army or are taken into positions like they are leaders, they are representing us in the parliament or representing us on the platform where we can we could be heard. And those all people are involved in the killing of Baloch. State has created death squads. These death squads are the persons who belong to us. Those are all Baloch, but unfortunately they are psychopaths. They don't know what are or what are human life matters. These death squads abduct the people, kill the people, they even drill the people. They even um, um, like uh, we have seen so many people who have uh, slaughtered the humans in front of us. Uh, so, and they all are people are uh, supported by the army. They are provided guns and the vehicles and other uh, support uh, support they can get. We are not are not getting any kind of education in this province. And when and when we protest and when we talk for this, we get threats. Uh, I was campaigning for the education uh, in, in, during the last nine years, and for this they have abducted my brother, and. Uh, uh, called my dad and my family pressurized my family uh, that I should withdraw from my activities even though I'm just campaigning for the education. They have forced me to get back. They have forced me to leave this whole activity. I was pressurized so much uh, and then um, my colleagues and we all have gathered and arranged to test. Uh, after six months, they have released my brother. So this is the story of the every Baloch who is being abducted uh, and the others who has been being killed uh, in fake encounters by the counterterrorism department. Or uh, like uh, there is, um, uh, I say there are memorandums of the atrocities of Pakistan. There is a mass grave, there are mass graves in Tutrak and also there is a uh, graveyard in Dasht area where hundreds of unknown bodies have been uh, uh, buried without identifying, even though there are, are thousands of people are missing. And when we speak about these missing persons and we, we are state 
although the state authorities are involved in these all things, but still we ask the state to solve this issue. We face, we face threats um, from Turbat to Islamabad. Uh, what have done by the state? They have started a media trial against all of our fellows or all those who are leading this march. They have blocked the roads uh, seven times from Turbat to Quetta, and from there they have blocked the road five times. They um, uh, arrested all the participants. They have to attempted uh, uh, arresting uh, all the uh, march during the way, uh, but uh, we have uh, survived. And when they reached Islamabad, all of the participants, including 800 people, were arrested just because peacefully raising our voices. So this is all the journey. Uh, this is all the uh, things we are facing. There are uh, no health facilities there. Uh, the maternal mortality rates are highest in this region. And uh, when we ask for the medical colleges, when we have asked for the health budget, and who's dealing with all these things in front of us, indirectly, all that is army. Uh, I say Pakistan is a colony of its own army, and we are the colony of that colony. Everything, even uh, uh, they want to appoint a gatekeeper in the Balistan, they ask first, they ask army, and then they appoint it person. Everything is happening in Balistan is uh, just because of the army, and um, uh, they are uh, declaring the representative, all those persons who even don't know what we want, who even don't consider us human. And the Safraz Bukti, which is uh, now going to be Prime Minister, uh, sorry, uh, the Chief, Chief Minister of uh, this uh, province, he says that there are only 50% that are missing and uh, all those are missing. They just uh, got angry with their family members and they went somewhere. This is the irresponsibility. This is the level of irresponsibility. And this man can represent this province who are trillions of, uh, uh, millions of resources that uh, this province uh, were uh, 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 best geographical area that's connecting the Afghanistan, the uh, Middle East, and all these areas. But this province is being treated like this just to continue the, their uh, all the planning. The, the, they are looting this um, province and they are doing whatever they can do. That's why they have suppressed everyone and they are uh, not letting any voice to get um, out of this province. Thank you so much. In the chat, there's a number of people who've raised this issue, and it clearly is abhorrent that people are being disappeared, abducted, and then unfortunately, this dump, dump and kill policy has taken part uh, recently. Sammy, she's involved in the Long March. Um, in 2014. She was also in the long march in 2024. So she has a long record of campaigning for civil liberties and on this particular as well. Um, can we invite Sammy to speak now? If the administrator can unmute. Uh, Sammy, can you rename your ID with your name? Because I couldn't find your name in the list. Okay. We, we've got nearly 500 people on this meeting. It's ex amazing the numbers that have come on. You can see it's sort of 470 or something at the moment. And it's been obviously I'm grateful for the organizers who put this all together. Can we find Sammy? No, if not, shall I go? Let's go to Jamal and then we'll come back to Sammy. Okay. Um, Jamal is here, I've seen in the group. If we can unmute Jamal. Yeah, Jamal, you're there. Okay, if we can unmute Jamal. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Just to uh, introduce you again, Jamal, just so everyone knows. Um, Jamal's an activist. He's been actively advocating for Baloch rights for over a decade. Um, he experienced forced disappearances by Pakistani forces, but eventually, Jamal, thank God, you were released. After fleeing to Bahrain, you lived there until moving to the Netherlands in 2022. 
He's continued his advocacy for those rights. He's currently media coordinator of Pay Tank, the Human Rights Department of Belarus National Movement. Um, he represented Belarusistan Bel- at um, COP28 in the UAA as well. Jamal, over to you. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you for organizing this and thank you for raising our uh, issue at the uh, UK Parliament. It's uh, uh, for Balochistan for long, for decades, people have been suffering, people have been struggling, people have been dying to be heard, to be uh, heard uh, from the international community that what has been happening in Balochistan. And we rarely find that someone talks about these issues, especially uh, the issue of enforced disappearances, which has become so common in Balochistan, which I personally am a victim of. And uh, uh, you can say that when a person is picked up, he has... Uh, status of being a human is dropped at the very moment when he is picked up then he is no more a human being for the authorities who are uh, involved in the disappearance of that person as i had uh, myself experienced it and i was abducted by the pakistani forces they introduced themselves to me as the intelligence agency's members and they interrogated me uh, they tortured me and uh, then after several torture, I was released. Uh, during the torture, they were uh, continuously trying to uh, pressurize me on giving them some information about the people who are engaged in political activities in Balochistan. Uh, they just wanted me to work for them when I was getting released. So there was only one condition that they had to release me at that moment was that I will work for them further uh, and that condition only I would be released and I I had to have an agreement with them that I will never share what happened to me, what happened. It, it's obvious and it's with every single person that uh, gets released has to have an agreement with the military. It is rare that people come out of those torture cells. Uh, I was lucky enough, I can say that I was I'm out and I'm speaking to you right now, speaking uh, to others right now. Uh, there are so many other people, thousands of people currently in Pakistan in torture cells. And I would say that place is unbearable. People may hear numbers from Balochistan, like if I would say, uh, quoting the report of Bank that in two years, 2,000 people were forcibly disappeared, which is average three people a day. It's, uh, it's a number for some people, but as I have experienced it, it's terrible. And I can see images that what they are going through right now, they're going through a severe torture that is unbearable for human uh, beings. And... Uh, uh, the way this systematically, how systematically they practice this crime uh, in Pakistan, first uh, of all, they have convinced their people that it is justifiable to abduct anyone in Balochistan. This is why you will never hear from Pakistani journalists, from Pakistani parliamentarians, from uh, the people of Pakistan that uh, the majority, uh, I mean, there are some people that they have showed concern about the enforced disappearances in Balochistan, but the people's mindsets are already controlled because they have uh, already built a perspective and uh, manipulated the issue, trying to make the people believe that those who have possibly disappeared are actually against the state, but that's not the case. Not everyone that is abducted is against the state or is against uh, is is to break Pakistan as they say in pieces or involved in militant activities. That's not the case of enforced disappearances. When I was abducted, uh, they were continuously telling me that you are from Mand, you have been in Gwadar, which is the port city. 
and you have been politically active since I was uh, active from 2006 and I joined multiple protests in Balochistan. The continuous efforts of them was to make me work for them in those areas where I have been and give them information about the people, even though I had no involvement in any such uh, activities that they always try to promote and they always try to let their people tell their people that these people who are possibly disappeared are actually not uh, innocent. So their effort uh, in abducting people is uh, to uh, basically silence them in a way. In Balochistan, you cannot have an opinion. If you have an opinion which go which contradicts the opinion or the way uh, how Pakistani politics works or how Pakistan's uh, military works, if it contradicts to that, you are eligible to be disappeared. And for them, it is justifiable to do whatever they uh, want to do with you. So even though if there is a water crisis in your area, you ask for water, what happened in 1947 where minor children were shot and killed in Jivani. If you go in protest uh, and you say that we don't have water and we need water, for that even people get disappeared. The basic concept of Pakistani forces is that you cannot raise your voice against the state. You cannot say anything negative about the state. If you say that, if you do so, then they will possibly disappear you. They will try to force you through torture that you should withdraw from your activism. What you do for the people, what you do uh, for uh, Balochistan, or uh, now even it's common in other parts of Pakistan, but Balochistan has been effective, affected uh, from this practice from more than 40 years. Uh, and there are thousands of people right now who are possibly disappeared, who are missing. Recently, uh, one of the senators of Pakistan was forcibly abducted. He was abducted for 16 days. And when he was talking in assembly, uh, he said that his mind doesn't process anymore. He cannot talk anymore. It was just for 16 days. And we can imagine the intensity of the issue for those like Dr. Dean Muhammad, who, uh, whose 15th year is uh, continuing. And uh, the uncertainty that he is in right now, that whether he would be released or whether he will stay further in the torture cell, the uncertainty for his family, the continuous uncertainty uh, that I would say it kills people, uh, the person, the victim, every moment. It kills the family members of the victims every moment, the, whether the person is alive, whether he's going to come back, whether he's not going to come back. So this is the situation of uh, enforced uh, disappearances uh, in Balochistan. The military is trying to impose its, uh, uh, its influence on the people and the people should say nothing. They should uh, have no say on the issues they face, even uh, since I have uh, been uh, a victim of enforced disappearances, it is so close to my heart that when I was released, I was, uh, as I said, I was lucky enough to flee from the country. And uh, that is why I'm able to uh, share my testimony and uh, my story, what happened with me uh, in Balochistan. Uh, we have been working on uh, some other reports, I cannot say that I am able to represent the overall issue of enforced disappearances, but there are multiple cases uh, that differs from mine, and they have faced worst uh, consequences uh, of their activism in Balochistan. Uh, we have uh, recorded uh, multiple uh, cases, and we have, through PAM, we have documented several testimonies, like... Uh, Khan Muhammad is one of them who was abducted, and he was lucky enough that he was. Uh, they tried to kill him. They shot him. He was shot eight times, but he survived. His video is on the internet. That when the local people find him, uh, uh, 
then uh, they make a video of him and later the, he's taken to a hospital. Since then, he's hiding from the military, but he has shared his story how they we have already documented that story, which is uh, available on social media, uh, uh, that he shared what happened with him. He was shot when he survived, but two others who were shot along with him, unfortunately, they couldn't make it and they were killed in that incident. In another case, there was a, a, a Swedish a national who was abducted from Balochistan and he was disappeared for 12 years. We tried to record his testimony, but the problem was that when uh, uh, he was getting released, just like me, he had an agreement with the military that he will never speak up. He will never share his story, what happened with him in Balochistan, what happened in those 12 days. And he had to, uh, uh, the military was satisfied to release him and trust him when there was an another guarantor for him. That if he speaks, if he says anything about the uh, his disappearances, this is this is why that uh, there are thousands of cases, but you can uh, uh, hear very few people talking about it. For me, if, if I was still in Balochistan, I would never dare to speak up. I would never dare to share my story because I would never want to go back to that torture cell again. So the people, when they are released, they have to give a guarantee to the military. There are very less people, as I said before, that have been released. Just as Ehsan Arjmandi I was talking about, uh, he was abducted. He, he is a Baloch, but a Swedish national uh he was uh, disappeared for 12 years when we recorded his testimony and shared it to public then they tried to abduct uh the person who uh, was uh his guarantor we received so many calls from his family that please they begged us to delete his testimony we had no other option to delete his testimony because we could not risk someone else's life uh, and uh, so far, far, we have seen no efforts from uh, uh, international community that was satisfying for us to resolve this issue because uh, resolving enforced disappearances issue is not a single person's release or a few persons release. It's it, the number is in thousands. And as I said, the average number of people getting disappeared is three person every day. Just now we are talking. I just received a message that someone got disappeared from Balochistan, which we later had to report uh, to the media so that uh, people know what is happening in Balochistan. This is the intensity of it post disappearances in Balochistan. Uh, uh, what we expect from the world is to pressurize Pakistan because Pakistan is somehow, uh, con uh, its army is convinced that they have to crush us. They have to kill us. They have to torture us. When uh, uh, during uh, uh, in my time when I was in torture cell, I had a feeling when uh, one of the military officers, he was torturing me, he was continuously saying that you are an infidel. You are uh, uh, working against the army of Muslims. So the one who is torturing even inside the uh, a torture cell, he is very much convinced that we deserve this. We must be tortured. We must be face the worst that uh, we can. So, in such a situation where hatred is its at its peak, where we have uh, no human rights at all, we don't have a say. If we say that we are disappeared and killed, we expect the international to build a pressure. Pakistan does not act upon uh, recommendations, as we see in. Uh, uh, what happens in UPR in the United Nations? Uh, people, the countries are continuously uh, recommending Pakistan to withdraw from these practices, but Pakistan still continues it. Even though Pakistan's prime minister, caretaker prime minister, recently he was uh, uh, indirectly he was admitting it that they are behind the enforced disappearances. It was during a TV show he was talking about the enforced disappearances, and he says that. It is justifiable because Pakistan's courts, uh, when they are these political activists abroad to the court and 
court then sets them free because there is no law in Pakistan that would suggest any uh, judge that he should uh, punish a person over his uh, activism or having an opinion. This is why they uh, conduct enforced disappearances in Balochistan. But I don't think that recommendations to Pakistan would work and resolve the issue, this issue. Uh, 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 to my knowledge, as uh, I've been active in Balochistan uh, from 2006 till date, I'm working on the issues of Balochistan and having a close look to how they work, how they operate in Balochistan. It is must that international community the countries like UK should develop uh, economic pressure on Pakistan that uh, would uh, pressurize Pakistan to withdraw from these criminal activities. Thank you so much for listening to me. Jamal, thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. And this ex sharing first-hand experiences like that, I think is absolutely critical because it gets across exactly what people are having to cope with at the moment. So thank you very much. And again, thank you for the work that you do with, with such determination as well. I'm just checking now to see if Sami is here. Do we know if Sami has arrived? So Sami's internet access is restricted and that's why she's unable to join today. Okay. Okay. Um, there's obviously been some problem with some areas of Belushistan in terms of the internet as well. Um, but Let's just celebrate this meeting. We've got 500 people here talking about this issue. Raise, and the speakers, I think, have given us a, an excellent presentation of what people are having to endure, what they're suffering, and what these issues are. Um, can I thank everyone for attending, thank our speakers, thank our organisers. And I just want to sum up in this way. Um, this is a... From my perspective as a British MP, um, for me now, this is a continuing campaign. We'll work together. And there's three issues, I think, for me to take away about the actions that are needed. First is to do everything we can to expose the human rights abuses that are taking place and to use every vehicle that we can for that. For me, as a member of parliament in the British parliament, the UK parliament, I'll use that platform as often as I can to expose the human rights abuses. And as I say, we've had the debate, we'll have further debates and further parliamentary questions to ministers, and we now have a meeting to be arranged with the Foreign, foreign Office and minister uh, who deals with these matters and we'll be taking a delegation to see him. The second thing is to do everything we can to secure the protection for campaigners and for all of you. And the, in addition to exposing what's going on, it's also to demand protection. So how do we do that? The third point is this. Um, I think we do everything we possibly can to mobilise international opinion, to put pressure on the Pakistani authorities to secure um, people of Balochistan as basic civil liberties and human rights. Um, in the discussions that we've had, there are three areas. One is to have the UK government working with international partners, other countries, to make representations to the Pakistani authorities, to put pressure on them as much as we can. But also there's this second issue, which is Pakistan receives large amounts of aid from not just the UK, but from other countries as well, is how we can use that aid to ensure that Pakistan itself respects basic human rights and also the civil liberties of the people of Baluchistan. Baluchistan. Um, the third area that people have raised is the issue of trade the trading links between the UK, other countries as well in Pakistan, and what conditions can be applied in those trade deals and trade arrangements. I think just finally, I think the United Kingdom, the British have a specific responsibility with regard to this issue because of its history 
but also because of the uh, final um, final role that the British government played um, when the future of the area was determined in 1948. Um, Britain played a role not just in the past in terms of its role as a colonial power, but also in that particular period when Balochistan had its desire for independence and to determine its own future. And unfortunately, I believe that the people of Balochistan were let down by Britain and others in the international community. So I think there is a specific responsibility there that we should impress upon the government here um, so for the role it needs to play now. Obviously, people have concerns about the resistance of the Pakistan government, the Pakistani authorities, to any intervention by international powers. But at the same time, it's a role that I think we have a moral responsibility to play, working with all of you as campaigners to secure freedom, civil liberties, and, of course, your right to determine your own future. Can I thank everyone for attending? Um, it's been, I think, incredibly successful to get so many people together in a Zoom meeting like this. I want to thank the speakers for their, I think, their clarity and the way that they presented the issues that people are facing now. And again, I repeat, thank them for their courage as well in their campaigning of what they're doing. Um, this won't be the last Zoom meeting like this um, that takes place. We'll try and ensure that we mobilise in this way as, as reg, on a regular basis, um, certainly so that we can give report backs on what's happening within the UK and the campaign that we're waging here, and also that people can keep us up to date upon what's happening in terms of the various campaigns that are taking place in Belushistan. Okay, thank you all very much for coming along, and I wish you all well and solidarity.